Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Ray Hennessy here. Welcome to another real-time edit. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope you guys have been enjoying this series. Um, please let me know in the comments, and uh, you know, feel free to send me some feedback any any which way. Um, every time I hear that you guys are enjoying these, it's uh, it's always a good thing. And uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions for them, other than slowing down, because uh, the advantage of me putting this content out for free is that I do it in real time because I would be normally editing these photos anyway. Um, and so it's just mainly a goal to, you know, my main goal, I should say, with these videos is to show you what is possible, not necessarily how to do it, even though if you are familiar with some of these tools, you should be able to pick up how I am doing it. Uh, and then just stay tuned and listen in the end uh, for where I'll tell you how, uh, if you really want to learn step by step at a much slower pace, uh, how I'm doing what I'm doing in these videos. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can learn that with me. So, all right, let's jump into this wonderful uh, black-billed magpie photographed out on Antelope Island out in uh, Utah during my visit to Mary and Karen out there this past uh, September of 2021. Although maybe this is coming out and this video might be coming out in 2022. I don't know. I forget how far ahead I am right now. Anyway, um, I was up in this uh, really cool rocky field and uh, was able to play with some really good foreground to just kind of settle the bird into that one little spot there and, and hide some of that. Um, some strong backlight here, certainly not like that good low backlight, but I think it'll work. I think I can come up with something. So I'm going to lift up the exposure. You know, I did expose pretty dark to begin with, but at ISO 200, just kind of with an understanding that I knew I could bring a good portion of it back. So uh, something like that, I think is a good start exposure wise, uh, definitely looking a little too cool white balance wise. So I'm going to throw some warmth in there. And that's feeling a lot better to me. Uh, I'm going to open this one up into Photoshop as a smart object because I might want to play with uh, some duplicate layers and try, I think I want to try darker everywhere. And you know, what? I'm liking the look of this overall. So actually, this is going to become my base. I'm going to switch the sequence of these, put the lighter version on top, and then maybe just paint in some of that uh, there. So let's see if we can get a good subject selection going here. Ooh, I wonder, can it not do it on, yeah, it can. I don't know why that happens. And but that's a horrible subject selection. Yeah, look at this. Uh, well, let's see how, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, that's really bad. Okay, well, screw you subject selection. Here we go, we're gonna do it ourselves. Um, I'm actually gonna try a little color range action here because I think I can do better with that. Uh, just trying to select the background, maybe, uh, maybe not. Yeah, I guess there's just a lot of, a lot of mixed tones going on there. Okay, all right. Well, the old-fashioned way it is, manual. Here we go. So, just manually go ahead and kind of highlight this bird out of here. Uh, this is going to be way too much, by the way. Uh, so I'm not actually going to leave it like this. Uh, I am just doing this to uh, get the initial selection going here. And then I'll go ahead and um, mask it back in kind of to the level that I'm actually interested in using once I get the initial selection kind of cut out. Uh, and the reason I do that is because if I'm going to take the time to kind of work these edges like this and, and really get precise in a, in a manual mask like this, um, I don't want to do it with a lighter opacity and then decide later that, oh, you know what, I kind of want a little bit more out of this, you know. Um, and that I might want a little bit more opacity. And so uh, it's better if I just kind of do it completely full up front, and then I can kind of decide how much or how little I want whatever the effect is that I'm doing showing later. And uh, more importantly, I can reuse the selection because it's gonna be a good clean selection across the entire subject. Uh, and we're just gonna have to obviously fade it out down there. So let's kind of smooth this out. Oops. Go down in here, there we go. Getting better with that. Almost there. Uh, I'm just gonna ignore those feathers down there because I know I'm actually not gonna lighten any of that stuff anyway. Uh, not really gonna worry about the legs either. So we'll just kind of come into this vicinity here and a little bit of cleanup. We're almost there. 
I know this part is never fun. It's kind of the boring part to watch, I'm sure. Uh, so if you're smart, you've probably already fast forwarded through and found out where I kind of picked up actually editing this photo, not just sitting here cutting it out, playing like color in the lines, like, uh, like young kids, right? All right, there we go. There's everything filled, so let's do that. Looking good, so I'm gonna go ahead and save. Oh wait, I don't wanna save that version. I do wanna fade out the tail at least. So we'll kinda of do that until I can't see it. There we go, all right. So there's my selection saved. And uh, instead of actually using any of it as it was, I'm just gonna load the selection and then just kinda of paint some of this back in where I want it. There we go. Maybe a little across the wing, just a little bit more across the wing. I'm gonna, again, they're going to wash out, but I'm going to fix this contrast in just a minute here like this. There we go. Now I should be able to, yeah, that's better, right? Kind of keeping some detail there, but getting more contrast in on the bird. Um, Paint some of that in down there. There we go. All right, so now let's think about maybe doing some burning through here. Definitely across the top. I really wish this like weird light rock line wasn't back there. So maybe I can kind of combat that a little bit. Something like that. There we go. And the color is just weird in that area too. So I'm going to try just manually warming it up and painting it in there, but um, yeah, it's not too bad. I was thinking I might not like that and I might do it a different way, but actually this is kind of working. Yep. That's kind of doing it. I can put some of that in here to kind of even that tone out. I don't know if you guys see it, but there's all these like weird, like, crazy uh, lines there like that, but it's just the zoom. So as soon as I go to 100%, you can see it goes away. It just turns into the actual texture of the rock, which is fine. Uh, so this is just um, the uh, the weird gradations that happen at uh, oddball zooms. Anyway, uh, let's zoom back in. I want to get a little bit more out of the eye there. Catch light, just kind of punch that up a little bit. Uh, maybe went a little too far there on the left side. It was already kind of bright, so we'll leave that alone. And then I'm going to try one more burn just across the bottom here just to kind of really make this, this little magpie stand out. And then maybe just a little burn behind it there to kind of make that rim light kind of stand out. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So let's take a look. So we went from that to that. Yeah, he's definitely stand out more, certainly cleaner. Uh, let me just throw just some, some general lightning and contrast right in just a kind of like just right there just paint it in i don't need a selection or anything like that just because i want the rock and everything else to kind of pop a little bit more there we go let me back off the blacks a little bit and a little bit more in the highlights and i think i'm done there we go i mean certainly not the most amazing photo uh the lighting was definitely tough and uh, that basically it. You know, if the, if the light was a lot better there, background maybe a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'd probably like it a little bit more, but uh, still, I just, I love these birds. Um, I think they're just really neat, uh, very charismatic, got a lot of personality to them. And there, we certainly took this in a different direction, you know, compared to kind of that washed out look that it had to begin with. So going from that to that relatively quickly there. Um, and hopefully, you know, you like that a little bit better. The bird stands out a little bit more. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning, more about exactly how I do what I do here, head on over to rayhennessy.com, hit the workshops menu, go to the online workshop section. You can check out all the different options here to work with me remotely. Um, feel free to check out the regular workshops. Uh, I got my all day and group workshops or my anytime workshops, which are all one-on-one -on -one based, based on seasons and where I'm going to be. I'm starting to travel a little bit more and more. So definitely stay tuned there as I add stuff as I'm finding new places. Uh, but right now for all of January and February, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between Florida and South Carolina, Hilton Head area, uh, where Emily Reed's Marsh is. If you uh, are familiar with her and what she does there, incredible stuff. So 
Uh, I'm going to be running some workshops there. So if you're interested in escaping the cold for a little bit from wherever you might be, or even if you're in a warm climate already and you want to come join me and photograph some amazing birds, please get in touch with me and we'll get something set up. And then lastly, don't forget about to check out the podcast. I got the Wildlife Photo Chat podcast and the Raw podcast coming out every week. Lots of fun there. And thanks so much for joining on this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.